the headline news always grabs onto parity. For us, if we were to look at the euro dollar rally, you know, 2000 to 2008, we've already breached a key Fibonacci level at 1.01. So we might get a near-term bounce off of, a, off of a support level. And we've seen that this morning with euro dollar rising ever so slightly. But you're absolutely right that fundamentally, you know, there's a lot of headwinds against the euro. Also, we think there's more upside to the dollar. We think the, the general decline in global growth will continue. We think sequencing risk is very important. We think the eurozone is more likely to go into the recession and have a, a deeper recession relative uh, to the U.S., um, and, um, and, and, and also positioning is also a key factor here as well. So we fundamentally haven't changed our mind and we think the dollar can continue to rally probably for another six months and the euro is going to take, a, take, take the brunt of that. It's super interesting call there about and, and flagging the sequencing risk because it feels like in the last couple of weeks the energy concern around Europe has really intensified and there's been so much focus on the negative impact on Europe, but less focus on the upside relative um, potential for the U.S. I mean, it, it feels as though the U.S. could actually stand out as a serious relative winner, even if just for the fact that it is not dependent on outside energy the way Europe is. Yeah, I mean, if you, I think if you're looking at the global landscape, we think that the risks are the, to the downside in terms of growth very positive to see the positive UK GDP numbers this morning, by the way. Um, but I mean, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of money that's been printed and there's a lot of people and investors that are still sitting on, on relative profits. And I'm really interested to see the future US GDP numbers just to draw a parallel with the UK. In, if I can, it was interesting to see that last quarter, the, the, the pullback in um, track and trace was a real headwind to growth. But then this quarter, what we've seen is actually, you know, GDP has risen mainly because of um, visits to the GDP have picked up. And the way that the data is flowing through because of the COVID crisis is very lumpy. So it's very difficult, I think, for the majority of economies to really latch on to what the underlying trend is. And I think something similar might be happening um, in the US at the moment. So if you look at gross domestic product, look at Q1, obviously um, fell about 1.6%. If you look at the Atlantic, Fed GDP now is currently around minus 1.2. So on the face of it, we might be looking at a technical uh, recession. We, we obviously find out when the numbers come out later. But just in terms of this lumpy flow through of data, if you look at something like global domestic income as like a sanity check, actually what you see there are the numbers are a lot more positive. And global domestic income and global domestic products never really see to eye to eye. But if you look at the statistical discrepancy between right. the two, it's completely out of whack. And right. I think we might be overstating the recessionary risks and it might be a lot less bad than we currently think.